After having a look at normal distribution and its probability density function, let's discuss some characteristics of the normal distribution. By having a look at this figure, we can see that the highest point on the normal curve is at the mean. In case of normal distribution, we have mean is equal to median is equal to mode. So for example, if we know that the mean of a random variable is 10 and if that random variable is normally distributed, then we can safely say that its median and mode are also 10. Okay. Another characteristic of a normal distribution is that it is symmetric. By this, I mean in case of a normal curve, the part or say the area to the left of mean, so this area is equal to the area to the right of mean. So these two areas are equal. Or you can say the shape of the curve to the left hand side of the mean is the mirror image of the shape of curve to the right hand side of mean. So this is what we mean by a symmetric distribution. Now comes the most important property of a normal distribution. So pay attention. The entire family of normal distribution is differentiated by two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. Out of these two parameters, mean determines the location of the distribution and the standard deviation determines how flat and wide the curve would be. Let me show you graphically what I mean by this. Have a look at the following figure. I have drawn three normal distributions here and these distributions have different means but same standard deviation. So the mean of this distribution is minus 7, the mean of this distribution is 0 and the mean of this distribution is 14. So now you can see how the mean of a normal distribution determines the location of the distribution. Like this distribution has a mean of 0, so this distribution is to the right of this distribution. And this distribution has a mean of 14, so this distribution is to the right of this distribution. Okay. And uh, note that all the curves that I have drawn here are equally flat and wide. And this is because we have assumed that the standard deviation of these distributions is same. Okay. Oh, by the way, the mean of a distribution can be any numerical value. It could be negative, positive or zero. So don't have a belief that mean should be a positive number only. Now let's take a situation where we have two normal distributions with same means but different standard deviation. As you can see, I have drawn two normal distributions here. And let's say we already know that one distribution has a standard deviation of 5 and the other distribution has a standard deviation of 10. It's time for a pop quiz now. By looking at this figure, can you tell me which distribution has a standard deviation of 5 and which distribution has a standard deviation of 10? Well, if you think that this distribution has a standard deviation of 10 and this distribution has a standard deviation of 5, then you are absolutely right. This is because we know that a larger standard deviation means more variability in the data. And this variability of data results in wider and flatter curves just like this one, this one. So I hope you are now clear that the two parameters that a normal distribution has are mean and standard deviation, where mean determines the location of the distribution and standard deviation determines the shape of the distribution. Okay. The last property of normal distribution that I am going to discuss with you is this. The part A of this property says that if we have a normal random variable, 
then 68.3% of the values of that random variable are within plus or minus one standard deviation of its mean. Let me explain you this part A first and then we will have a look at part B and part C. So have a look at this normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So what I'm trying to say is if I add and subtract one standard deviation to the mean, so this is mu plus sigma, so mean plus standard deviation, and this is mu minus sigma, then 68.3% of the values of a normal random variable will be in this region. Or in simple terms, you can say the probability that a random variable takes a value between these two intervals is 0 0.68. Let's take a situation to understand this better. Suppose that you want to research on the amount of soft drink filled in a bottle. And for this purpose, you take a sample of 10,000 bottles. So in this case, the amount of soft drink filled in a bottle is a random variable. And let's assume that a random variable is normally distributed with a mean of 12 ml and a standard deviation of 1 ml. So using our this property, we can say that the amount of soft drink filled in 68.3% of the soft drink bottles or say 6830 bottles will be between 11 ml and 13 ml. This 11 is mu minus sigma. Uh, our mu is 12 and sigma is 1. So this is 11 and this 13 is mu plus sigma. So we are saying that the amount of soft drink filled in 6830 bottles will be between 11 ml and 13 ml. Okay, so this is how we can use this characteristic of normal distribution. So this was the explanation of part A. According to part B, 95.4% of the values of a normal random variable are within plus or minus two standard deviations of its mean. So this means the amount of soft drink filled in 95.4% of the bottles or say 9540 bottles will be between 10 ml and 14 ml. Here mu minus 2 sigma is equal to 10 and mu plus 2 sigma is equal to 14. Okay, I hope this is clear and according to part C, 99.7% of the values of a normal random variable are within plus or minus three standard deviations of its mean. So this means the amount of soft drink filled in 99.7% of the bottles or say 9970 bottles because we have a sample of 10,000 bottles. So it will be between 9 ml and 15 ml. Here 9 ml is mu minus 3 sigma and 15 ml is mu plus 3 sigma. Okay, I hope you are clear with the intuition of what this property means. If you are thinking from where have we got these numbers like 68.3%, 95.4% and 99.7% and why is this number 68.3% and say not 71.3% then hold your thoughts for a while I'll cover this in my upcoming lectures.